Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. All right, today I'm going to start the process of fixing this lovely old lass. Um, she's a bit divoted at the top. Um, as you can see, there's Miss Hammond blows and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, amber like this one, it's been around for a long time and it's had generations of Smiths pounding on it. Um, and so you get these low spots, you get hits and that sort of thing. The hits themselves I'm not too concerned about, but the low spot I am because it's getting in the way of me straightening my work. Okay, and putting a square on and looking at it towards the sunshine, you can see just here we've got oh, probably a quarter inch. Um, so about three mil, three and a half mil, something like that of a divot in the centre. When we bring the square out to the edge, a lot less divot. Same on the other edge, a lot less divot. So obviously it's been worked more in the center and more down on that center part. A little low on the heel because people have been using the heel of the amble. So again, that needs tidying up. Same there, little low on the heel. Okay, side to side, out the very front of it, towards the horn, there's a bit of rock. So it's actually higher just there. As we come back in that divot spot, low in the divot, high on the sides. That's not too bad there. Across the hardy holes, not too bad. And towards the tail, same thing. Where more work's been done on the corner, we've got a high spot in the center. Because we know we're high in the center, that's where we want to start our work. Just back here. So my first cuts are going to be taking some of that center height out through there. And we know here that we're straight across the back there. And then more into there. So we'll take those cuts and have a look and see how it's all sitting. Obviously, once we get them down, we're still going to need to work down those sides to try and get down to here. But that should look a lot different once we've taken those off. Now, to do this part, because it's just a rough part, I'm just going to use a hard disc in a grinder um, and just knock those points off. Hard disc is going to bring it down quick. There's less control over it may leave some divots in it but we'll clean that up later because at the moment i'm just looking for a quick rough removal of material just so i can see where i've got to fix things okay now biggest problem in using a hard disk is you can't get a flat angle as you can see gap there with the guard on it's certainly going to be in the way but even just with the arbor on it it's going to be in the way you get a flat angle just with the tip, but generally you're going to be grinding on a bit of an angle. So once you've taken this rough surface off, you want to swap out of the hard disk because it's you want to get something that's going to sit more flat to the work, which this isn't going to do. But for bulk material removal, hard disk is ideal. Okay, you also want to make sure you're wearing your hearing protection, grind up puts out a lot of noise, some eye protection, and if you're not in a well ventilated area, some uh, breath protection as well. So, you know, a dust mask with filters on it, that sort of deal.
Yeah, I'm using my grind off spanner as I go along and I'm just checking how I'm going for placement. Um, that way I've got a fair idea of what I've, what I've done, what I still need to do. Just those, those small checks all the way along means that I don't end up cutting too much and then have them do more work. Uh, you can see the ripples in it from using that hard disk because you're just using that point to grind so you get that little ripple effect. That's fine, we'll clean that up as we go along. Okay, looking with our square. Still high in the front. Still got our divot in the center, but we've taken a fair bit off um, just by doing those edges. Uh, we're still low in the heel and we're hitting Yeah. So again, using a marker, just gonna mark where I've got hitting. Up the front here. Okay, we come to the outside edge. A lot of the outside edge is a lot cleaner. Again, we've still got that little bit of a groove, but it's a lot less noticeable. Again, on that side, that little bit, but a lot less noticeable. Again, still low in that heel. So we wanna take off. And now we're starting to take out those sides. We're working sort of that way. And taking out that section. As you can see, it's got a bit of a round down on the edges. There and there. I don't want to get rid of that. Uh, that's ideal. Look, I would like a crisp edge, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to bring any section except maybe the heel back to a crisp edge. Uh, a crisp edge is handy, but I don't think I'm going to get there. And again, up here we'll connect the dots. Take out those touching sections. Okay, so that's our next set of grinds. Have a look at it again. We're good at the hardy hole. A little bit on each side. Back a little forward a little. Just like so. At the front. Still there. Okay, come across the edge. is looking really close. I mark the sections that I can still see daylight. The back. Again, we're getting close. So again, I mark where I can see daylight. Now again, we're just gonna join up our lines. Now we need to come through there. That side's pretty good. There. Okay, we 
curve in there because we want to work around that divot. We don't want to make it deeper. Okay, colouring in with a marker just makes it easier to identify what needs to be cut. And I could do it just off the marks. Um, but with a coloured in marker section, just makes it pretty obvious what needs marking. So every section that we could see daylight, we'll leave it alone. All the parts that we couldn't see daylight, that we're cutting off. I'm losing daylight, um, which means I'm going to stop working. Uh, there's no point pushing it too far. Uh, this is going to be a project that takes me a couple of days to finish. Uh, I'm absolutely fine with that. I prefer to take my time, have enough light, get it done right, rather than rush it trying to get it finished and end up ruining my anvil or taking chunks out of it when they're not supposed to be and end up having to remove more steel. So, having a look at it, just getting very, very close. Still seeing a light in a couple parts on each side. And then we're gonna be working, as you can see the shiny part, we're working in towards where that divot is. Uh, so we're taking down the outside, working towards that divot. And then once we're just left with that divot, then we're just gonna be removing material down on everything apart from the divot. So I will leave it here for now. I'll start again tomorrow, uh, nice and fresh, and give it another crack. A few days later, unfortunately, uh, the end of daylight savings has hit, and I have not had time to get this done. So I'm getting back onto it now, um, but I'm gonna have to do it under lights, which I wanted to avoid. All right, next thing we wanna check now that we've got reasonable flatness, we've still got to take some metal out here, um, but we want to check and make sure that there's no twist in it. So if we come down and those two rods line up with each other, which means there's no twist. If there's some twists, then you get that effect. And the two rods wouldn't line up. All right, well, let's get back into the grinding. I know that um, it's okay, there's no twist in it. I'm just gonna check that as I go along. Um, same as I'm checking the flat as I go along and just making sure that I keep true. Okay, so we keep going down, slowly but surely, checking it all the time. Just making sure that we're good underneath. Any spots that are high, we grind those. Any spots that are low, we leave those. So I'll just keep going down until I get most of this out. Uh, don't necessarily want it all out, um, but I just want to get most of it out. One thing that does help to keep you nice and straight, if you've got a ruler like mine, which has got paint on it, when you got it on the surface, Rub it backwards and forwards. As you can see, there's little marks. That shows you where your where your high spots are. Those are the spots you need to focus your grinding on. You know, if it's hitting a couple places along there, you're getting it pretty flat. So, there we go. There's a little trip, trick to keeping it straight. Hey okay, folks, here's where I finished last night. You can see, still got a little bit there. Um, to get much more out of that, I'm gonna need to take probably another mil, two mil off the whole face of the anvil, and I really don't wanna do that. Um, it's not too bad, you know, a few little pit marks and that sort of thing. And, you know, 
I'm not a perfect blacksmith, so it will pick up a couple hammer dings as I go along. So there's no point stressing about that too much. Um, yeah, had to knock off last night. Uh, this will test your patience. It will test your definition of what's perfect. And it will also test your neighbor's ability to take noise. So I think they'd turn off before they, I got to that point. Um, we put this, put the straight edge on. You can see that is pretty flat. We've got that slight little depression in the center there, but can't even get a thumbnail under it. Across the far side, pretty good. So at this stage now that most of the hard grinding's done. We're gonna change out from this hard disc onto a flat disc. Uh, this one is a ceramic flat disc. It's at 40 grit. Uh, it's the same sort of paper that I would use for my first grind on knives. Um, so yeah, it will eat some material away, but it's not as gonna not gonna cut it away as good as the hard disc. Um, but you see how as I've ground, it's developed more of an edge on there. Whereas this already has that angled edge on it. So this is perfect. It's gonna help us get a little flatter. Um, you know, just sort of little marks. It's gonna to help to bring those out. So we'll swap over and start grinding on that one. You can see how just after a couple of minutes, it brings it up a lot better. Absolutely magnificent. Um, now, while I've got this one on there, I'm gonna clean up the edges. Uh, they have sharpened up a bit in places that I don't want them sharp. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of round over. You know, I've got a nick here that I'm never gonna get out. Um, yeah, there's some other nicks too, but I can soften everything up a bit. Also, while I got it on, I'll do a bit of work on the horn. Um, horn's a little rough, it's not too bad. Uh, it's supposed to have a slight flat coming out of here, but I wanna ease that back a little bit. Um, and just go over the horn and make sure I get a lot of the big dings and that sort of thing out of it. So I'll give it all a go over. Our next step, I'm going to use the same grip, uh, this time in a belt sander. Uh, it's got a flatter base on it, so it's going to help me to get any lumps and bumps out using the 40 grit. Um, it's going to work reasonably well, uh, reasonably quickly. So we'll give it a go at the 40 grit, and then I've got some finer paper just to clean it up a bit more. There we are, all smoothed off. Um, that's down at 120 grit. Um, by feeling it, I can feel that slight sort of hollow. Um, but yeah, there's not much there at all. So I'm really happy with that. It's come up great. Um, now I'm gonna finish it off just using a woven fiber uh, flap disc. Uh, we call this a scotch bright one here in Australia um, just going to use that just go over the top um, we just want a bit of randomness in the in the pattern of any um, marks I don't want it totally smooth um, that's not what I'm after 
uh, but I want a bit of randomness just so it's going to bite the metal a little bit when I'm forging. Don't want big marks because if I've got big marks, then the big marks are going to remain in the metal. So we'll just go over it with this one. There we go, let's have a look at it tomorrow in the daylight. There's the finished product. As you can see, looking beautiful. We've still got that tiny little divot in there. A um, little bit of pit mark, but I, as I said, I'd have to take too much metal off to try and get that out. As you can see along the side here, there's still a few dings and that sort of thing. Again, to try and get those off, I would have to take too much metal off. I'd end up with too much round on the corner and it'd be really hard to do sharp corners with it. Like the same on this side. Horn, looking great. Again, a few little dings in there, but you know, the amount of metal I'd have to take off to get them out, it's just not worth it. Um, brings in the discussion of um, whether you do uh, fix up the face of your anvil. Um, yeah, it'd be more, worth more as an antique with a you know banged up old face, but I've got it to use, so I'm quite happy to cut the face back, get those years of work off it. It's still going to have a work hardened face um, because it has still been worked. Um, and yeah, I'm more than happy to cut the face back because it's an animal I use. And I don't think ant they should be left sitting in front yards as ornaments. I think they should be have metal beaten on them. Uh, as to what you're going to use to protect the face, absolutely nothing. Um, it is cold metal. You're not going to heat it up and get anything to soak in there. Um, it will pick up a little bit of rust over time. That's absolutely fine. Anything I put on here is going to end up on the work. If I put an oil on here or anything like that, it's just going to end up burning with hot metal on it. Um, you can see, you know, we've got a little bit of rust on that face. It happens. It's an anvil. It'll pick up a bit of rust with time. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching, and bye for now.